Hey friends, welcome to the Johnson City Living Podcast, where we learn about the people, places, events, and flavors that make Johnson City just a lovely place to live. I'm your host, Colin Johnson, with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. If you're interested in buying or selling a home in the area, or if you're looking at investing in a rental property, give us a call at 423-930-8003, and we will look forward to helping you. Now, let's get to today's episode. Okay, friends. Hi. It is an awesome day here in Johnson City, and I am super excited because I am here with Taylin Henderson with Stella and Cooper Company, and she's got all kinds of cool stuff she's got going on. Um, Actually, we've met in the past. My wife did a little business pop-up thing at one of her events, and it was just cool to get to know her a little bit, and so I'm excited for you guys to get to know Taylin. So thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited. So, Talk about Henderson, or sorry, Stella, Cooper, and company. So um, Stella and Cooper are both dogs. Cooper's mine, and Stella is my best friend who had started the company with me when we were working at Wheeler's. Um, We just had some extra time on our hands, and I had some candle issues where my candles were setting off my smoke alarms, and Uh I had just gotten a little 10-week-old puppy. And so I did some research, and bad for puppies. So I wanted to make my own candles because it was about fall season. That's cool. And And so you just started making candles. Yeah, pretty much. And then down the line, people started buying them, which was great. And then I did my first pop-up show and that went really well. And then I was like, well, I could make soap probably too. Yeah. And it's kind of gotten to the point where I'm kind of like, well, what can't I make if I give it a shot? So I'm doing clothes. I have, um, Haley crochets she does all of the plushies Uh uh-huh um that I sell in my booth and she is amazing she's a huge help and she has just been a blessing to the business um so now we've got plushie soaps skincare products still got the candles in the melts and they're getting fancier and fancier every day that's cool some apparel now too yeah that's awesome well I got a little ahead of myself because it's the Johnson City Living podcast and you live in Johnson City I do so tell us what your favorite thing about Johnson City is? Well, loaded question. I right now work for Parks and Recreation for Johnson City. So you're like Leslie Nope. Yes. Awesome. (laughs) So there's a lot to love. I work in the um, promotions and events department for Parks and Recreation. So um, we do like the Birch Street concerts, which are Friday nights through August. Um, We do the back to school bash that just happened this past weekend. Yeah. So it's been really fun to get out in the community. I get free concerts all the time now and I get to meet a lot of people and I do the photography. So I get to be in the moment with the kids and families that are there. I love that. That's cool. So that's your full-time gig now. That is my full-time gig. So Johnson City Parks and Rec is what your favorite thing about Johnson City is right now. Yes. I I love love all the parks and all the recreation. There is a ton of stuff to do, isn't there? There is. What's your favorite park? Well, I work at Wing Deer. Ah. And I do love the lake side of Wing Deer, but mm-hmm. I also really, um, I like Rotary Park. Mm-hmm. And it's so woodsy there and it all is. the cabins. I grew up going to Rotary there. Park before Wing Deer. Can you tell our audience the story behind the winged deer? You can't. No. I don't either. <laughs> I, I think it was like. I, it, I know it was like a family property that uh-huh. they allowed the city to purchase because it was outside of city limits. Right. So I know. 1991 is when that happened, but that's about it. I think we don't have a lot of horses around, but we got a ton of deer, and so maybe there was like a unicorn deer. Maybe. And it was winged, and or maybe they're just running so fast down the middle of the road that they look like they've got wings. I tell you what, I've we seen do have deer. a family of deer out if there. If you see a deer run across the road and jump like into the woods, it just looks like it's flying. It's yep. amazing. It's amazing. How long have you lived in Johnson City? Going on three years now. Okay. So not, That's cool. not too long, but I've been here a good while. All right. And so let's talk about um, your business a little bit more. Yeah. Um, Stella and Cooper Company. Um, what do you see like the vision of it? Where do you want, the, I mean, you said you're making new stuff all the time. Where do you see it growing and getting yeah. into it? So I'm doing a little real estate shopping at the moment mm-hmm. um, downtown, really looking for a home that's going to fit and grow with the store right. and with the city because it is taking off. So yeah. I'm looking at some of the new renovations that are going on down mm-hmm. here and hoping to open within the next 
six months to a year, I want to make sure that everything is to my very, very high standard before I open it up. Gotcha. And we are in festival season. So right now I've got um, Meet the Mountains coming up on the 18th and 19th at oh, Wing cool. Deer. Yeah. So that'll be a really fun one. And then I have ETSU Farmers Markets, which are every Thursday for September and October. That's cool. So I will be absolutely strapped during that time. And then once that slows down, I plan to really get into finding a store. So Meet the Mountains is not in Founders this year? No. Is that because of all the construction stuff? Yes. Gotcha. So they got a one-time pass to be at Wing Deer Park, and I think it's going to be so cool. So oh, yeah. So maybe it. it'll they'll be like, hey, we actually had a better turn. Yeah, they're going to let you get in the lake. Oh, Can't really beat it. That is cool. Try the kayaks in the lake instead of like a little yeah. pond or whatever it was. I'm sure that saved them some money, too. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Since you have dogs, talk a little bit about having a dog, being a dog owner in Johnson City, Walking your dog, dog parks, that kind of thing. Where do you what do you like to do? So I actually live up in Gray. Okay. Not a lot of walking. You can walk there. a long way to Johnson City from Gray. Yeah. It's like yeah. about ten minutes or ten miles, so it's probably gonna take you an hour to walk here. At least. <laughs> With you know, all the pee breaks and and the sniffing of everything. That's exactly right. Yes. I, I like to take Cooper down to the parks and walk him around. We'd go down to Wing Deer often. Um, just because that's the first park we hit on the way down to Johnson uh -huh. City. We used to go to Founders almost every day, but now they've got that construction going, and he's not a fan of big power tools. Yeah. And so, but we do. Bulldozers and caterpillar equipment. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't love that, but we do. We go a lot of places. I haven't been to the dog park at um, Willow Springs just yet. Yeah, I've heard it's awesome. Lots yeah. of people go there. Maybe I've been to Willow Springs a bunch, but we never take our dog. Yeah. I think I'm going to start doing that. And I've heard that there's another dog park that's... There's a cool place called Off Lee yeah, Social. And it's yes. like a... Um, and actually, if you go back on some episodes, you can listen to the owner of that on our podcast. He was here probably six months ago. And you can take your dog and meet other people and have your dog play with other dogs. And you can have a cocktail and some food and just hang out. I've been needing to get him down there. I've been, I watch their social media pretty yeah. <laughs> religiously. He, it, it looks like a cool, great place. It is a super cool place, for sure. Now, did you grow up in Johnson City? No, I'm from Hawaii. What the? Yes. What? So talk about that. How does little Taylor get from Hawaii to Johnson City, Tennessee? Well, I've kind of been all over. Uh, so I was born and raised in Hawaii, and then about a week after I graduated high school, I moved to... California, around the Los Angeles area for college. Okay. Um, and I grew up dancing. So I danced nice. professionally out there for about five years, and I taught dance full time out there. And then when COVID hit and everything shut down, I moved back home because I wasn't sure What's what the situation going was right. going to be. Mm -hmm. And rent's expensive out there. So with no studios and no gigs, I was, and nothing open to work at it anyway. Um, so I moved home for a year, and then um, I was looking to go back out to the continent. Mm -hmm. um, and I looked at Oregon, Texas, and here. And I just random here. like throwing a dart at the board. How do we well, how open. do we pick Oregon, can <laughs> Texas, or Johnson City? <laughs> well, the main two requirements was that I could find a job. Yep. Because things were open enough for me to find a job, and the cost of living. Gotcha. So I was looking at those things, and I found a job here the fastest, and an apartment, and everything just came together so quickly and easily. That oh, that's I just, cool. I came out to visit, and I had a flight booked back for a week later, and I never went. So You've been here ever since? I have been here ever since. Now, have the folks come to see you from the Not from Hawaii? Not yet. Okay. Um, my sister just had a baby, though, last month, so I will be going home at the end of September. That's awesome. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. That's your first niece or nephew? That is my first uh, tr true niece. Okay. My cousin who's really close to us had a baby as well. That's about a year, maybe a year and a half now. That's cool. So talk about Hawaii, growing up in Hawaii. What was that like? I mean, did you surf every day? I'm sure. No. During COVID actually. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's about all you could do is be out in the water. Isn't that crazy? But up until that point, no, I was pretty, um, I went to a really strict, not strict, but I went to a really good private school uh -huh. um, and you have to be native Hawaiian by blood to go there. Okay. So a lot of cultural learning there, a that lot of cool. preparation for going out and being on your own in the world, which was great. That is and good. I was very involved. I did cheer, dance, I was on student council, 
Uh, my sister, who was even more involved than I was, she's a few years older than me. She did the speech team. So I sat at the speech team until <laughs> my mom could come pick us up. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, we did a lot of things in, around the school just because they had all of those opportunities. Yeah. And then I also danced in a studio, 24-7 dance force. Um, and they also do really great things. They what kind of dance were you doing? All of it. Everything but tap. I am not a tapper. Okay. But I did do jazz, hip hop, ballet, the works. What's your sense. favorite? Um, what's your favorite out of those? I don't know what that's called. Favorite form. Um, contemporary. I do really like. I like to teach contemporary. Uh -huh. um, I think at performance wise, like hip hop or. Yeah. It's called jazz funk. It's in gotcha. the middle of jazz and hip hop. That's kind of what LA is. So that's, gotcha. what, that's what I've really gotten into since moving. So when you said you were a professional dancer, you were teaching dance or were you like, like one of Beyonce's? Both. Like, Not really? Beyonce. Okay. Um, I toured with Jordan Fisher and nice. I did a performance with Janet Jackson. What? Yeah. So I got to do some really cool stuff out there and I, I did a few music videos and stuff like that. Um, and then I was also teaching full time because gigs are never full time. Right. No matter what they tell you, it's not. Gotcha. That is cool. Dana Jackson. Who knew? Yeah. She's awesome. She is. Yeah. And just, yeah. So you got out, you leave Hawaii, and this is just pretty cool. And then you've now found an apartment and you got a job. What was your first job you got here? Was that with the Parks and Rec Department? No, that was teaching at a dance studio also. Okay. Yeah. And so are you still teaching dance locally? Yes, um, nice. I'm just doing private lessons right now okay. so I can work around my schedule a little better. And I work with kids who are competitive. Uh -huh. So I do solos. Um, I'm coaching for the university dance team for oh, middle cool. school yeah. and their cheer middle school team this nice. year. Nice. So I'm excited for that. We start next week. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you've got a lot going on. I have a lot going on all the time. Do you ever, what, like, do you ever just take a break? What yeah. do you do? What do you do for like downtown? Well, I kind of consider teaching my downtime. Uh -huh. It's it is like refreshing to me. Sure, yeah. it's not something that takes a lot of energy. I mean, you it does it. physically. It does take a lot of energy, but it, I do love it, and it kind of just replenishes my soul a little bit. Getting to work with the kids and yeah, seeing them do what they love. I think we're all uniquely gifted to give away something to someone else. You know, yeah. like we've got something in us that we need to teach or share, or, and so it's cool that you're. Teaching yeah. young ones how to dance. Yeah. And I like to see the ones who have that same teaching spark in them grow up and just want to share it as well. Yeah. Um, so some, who are some of the people that have been influential in your life that got you into dance, got you to Johnson City? So uh, Marcelo Paclop is um, the owner of the studio that I grew up in. Uh -huh. He is an absolutely amazing man. He's done so much for the dance community in Hawaii and by proxy Los Angeles. Yeah. So um, Janet Jackson's whole team, her stylist, her choreographer, her lead dancer, they all came from my studio. That's awesome. So he does a lot of great stuff and he also has a program for um, people with special needs and sensory disorders so that they can dance. And oh, they've that's cool. blown up and they've done so much with that. So they go to Disney World and they just had a show and everything and he has really inspired me to teach and to work in a way that's not only about money sure but also about giving back yeah um and phil wright dana alexa there's a ton of people that have really shaped me and made me realize that i do actually really love teaching mm -hmm. because at first it was just a job yeah and now it's just that's all i want to do is just teach and make things and make candles and yeah that's cool do you, uh, can you start some classes through the um, Parks and Rec Department for dance? They actually do have some dance classes. Yeah. Um, it's through Dancer's Dream, I believe. Okay. But they have it at Memorial Park Community Center, and they're really affordable. That's cool. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Um, so what are some of the, so you said, you've mentioned COVID a couple of times. What okay. else would have been some of the difficult times in your life that you're like, oh, I got through that and it made me better? Well, I moved to what I thought was Los Angeles for college, pretty blindly. What did you get your degree in, or what were you studying? Uh, marketing and communications. So that's exactly what I'm doing now, which is great. That is good. Finally having Isn't that cool career. how it comes full circle? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Took a while, but we're back. So moving to L.A., 
Yes, so I was actually in Thousand Oaks, which is up in the valley, um, and it was advertised that the school is 30 minutes from LA. It is 30 minutes from LA County, which is huge. So um, that was about, and I didn't have a car. So it was a three hour transit on buses, walking, train, all of the above just to get to auditions. And that was a real struggle because I had to leave my dorm at like four in the morning. Wow. And the first couple times I was like, I don't even know where I'm going. Yeah. I'm just getting on this bus and hoping I get, get to where to I need right to be place. and can get back home later. Yeah. Uh, but it all, I mean, it worked out. I booked my first gig and it was like, the Lord weight was, lifted off my shoulders. Go, yeah. so was, it was fantastic. And so pretty much from there and getting that teaching job and um, meeting some really great people there, everything kind of fell into place. And then moving out here was obviously a little bit of a struggle just because it was all new and I was so far from home. Yeah. So every now and then I'm pretty independent, but every now and then you get the little, no one can help you if you crash your car. No one can uh, help you if you get sick. There's no one who knows that you, how you how to help you or how to get to you yeah. and they're at minimum a 12 hour flight away so every now and then you get that little a little yes but now voice in I've, your mind that I've got I'm my dog alone. I've got yeah. my boyfriend and he's amazing he's a teacher and that's a baseball cool. coach so that's oh sweet yes so my springs are filled with baseball gotcha and my falls are candle ah. now it's my season awesome okay so let's talk about making candles yeah and so when I was a kid, I went to um, Rocky Mount, which is a local historic site, and you can go and make candles, and that's like the old-timey way, so that you could have light to read. You're making fancy candles that smell really good, and you, I guess they could put off some lights, but <laughs> luckily we have power now, and so um, talk about making candles, the process, and like if somebody's out there like, oh, I wouldn't mind making a candle. Yeah, it's honestly a very easy thing to do. Yeah. For like a what are the ingredients? Candle. How do you do it? Um, I make everything with soy. Soy wax, um, just because that is one of the cleaner burning things. I try to stay away from paraffin. Beeswax okay. is good too, but it shrinks a lot. Um, but you pretty much just melt it down. Where do I get the soy wax? You can get it a lot of places. Okay. You can get it at Amazon if you're yep. just doing it pretty recreationally. You yep. can get it from an actual candle source, okay. um, which is what I use because I just want to make sure that everything that I have it's is... Pure. Yes. Yeah. So I get things from Candle Science. I get my jars from Knoxville, actually. No, oh, that's cool. Um, local. Yes. They're as local as you can get for candle jars. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, they don't have an actual storefront, so they still have to ship it. But that's okay. Um, and you pretty much just melt it down to whatever temperature that wax requires. Mm -hmm. Like on the stove? I use Over a, a um, whatever whatever's oh, hot yeah. works. I use a little hot plate. Uh -huh. um, but when I first started, we were using the stove. Okay. So I would put it in, I mean, you can do it in anything. You can even microwave some waxes in like a glass. Um, bowl or something. Yeah, a bowl yeah. or measuring cup or whatever you have. Huh. Yeah, there's really, there's no bad way to do it. On a hot day, you could probably leave it out in the sun. It'll melt okay. down. Um, you add whatever scent you want. I recommend essential oils. Again, you can get them from Amazon. You can get them at a lot of the local shops down here. So the melted candle is sitting there on the hot plate in mm -hmm. some kind of container, and you just stir in some of the yep. essential oils. And that's what it's going to smell like when it burns. Okay. So you go until you think it smells good. I have a exact formula now, so that okay. all of mine are consistent. But what are your favorite scents you. right now you're using? Blueberry is always a hit. It is fall, so I have gone pumpkin pretty yeah. hard. Um, I don't, I don't think it's fall yet. We're getting there, but candle wise, it's fall. Gotcha. Yeah, you're producing for. for and you know, it did get fall. cold in June for a little bit there, and I started we making some pumpkin stuff. There you go. I jumped the gun a little Although bit. Oh, you can't hot. get pumpkin spice lattes for a long time, for a while. For a while, but Which your is house a good can thing. smell like one. There you go. Yeah. And I really like the chai tea. That that's my favorite. It's Carly loves chai tea. I yeah. don't like chai tea to drink. Really, but you like the smell. But of it. the smell is really good. I Same will say. Coconut. I don't drink it, but I do love it when she makes it. It smells delicious. Yeah, it smells so good. Yeah. So that's probably my favorite. That's what I have burning right now Okay. in my house and on, on my melter. So we got the essential oils in there, and then can you color it? You can color it. Um, How do we do that? I, again, I use candle sourced dyes for it. You can do a liquid dye. You can do a wax dye, which is just a piece of soy wax that's already been pre-colored. Oh, And gotcha. you just drop it in there and Look stir it around. It melts in. 
It's pretty easy. If you want to be cool and tie dye your candles, you can pour it first into whatever jar. See, you this have was my next question. Well, how do you it. swirl it or layer it and get different colors? Yeah, and so flavors and layering's easier than anything. You just pour, pour some in there, let it set up, pour yeah. it again, and just make sure you don't pour it too hot the second time because it'll just melt right, Go right through, through the other one and combine. But swirling it now, you take your like a toothpick mm -hmm. or something, dip it in the dye, and then just kind of swirl it into the candle while it's already in the jar and it's still melted and That's it'll cool. kind of spread around it looks really cool while make it's it look pretty yeah nice okay and then um did we forget something what do we we can't just light the wick like the candle we gotta have a wick in there somewhere <laughs> yes right? so they do actually make wickless candles what? which are interesting yes you put them on a heat pad i've never heard of that mitch you ever heard of a wickless candle it's all you're, the rage. You're high tech, but you're up. Uh, you're you're current. You're current. Okay. I don't. Uh. It's for the. It's my mom's thing too. It's for the very forgetful, my leave a candle burning people. Ah. Uh. So you have you lose that liability there. How do, so you just burn? How does what's how does it work? <laughs> so you like, put the candle work? on a hot thing mm -hmm. on a hot plate. It's kind of like a wax melt, but in a jar. Ah. And it'll just burn from the bottom up. I was thinking it had like some kind of like. They also make lamps now. Alcohol just... in it that's burning and the, you know, you just light it and it just kind of takes off like kind of like a sterno. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, that might be more liability than a wick. Yeah. It just keep on burning. I don't know how you turn it off. But anyway. <laughs> Douse it. So you could put a wick in there. Yeah. Like, uh, what are the wicks wick. typically? Cotton or wood? I know there's you a wood wick. You can use a wood wick. Yeah. They have some really cool crackling woodwicks if you like that background noise in that's your cool yeah yeah okay well i guess people could reach out to you to, on how to make oh candles, yeah absolutely most importantly come just buy one from you yeah now how let's say mitch and i wanted to go and get a candle from you mm -hmm. how do we do that um so right now i'm online okay stella um and you can see everything i've got going on there the yeah. website is a little scarce at the moment since i'm getting ready for festival season i don't okay. want to put everything i have online and sell so, out yes so um through the slow season that's when online really takes off okay otherwise you can find me every week at um the etsu farmers market every thursday where's etsu's farmers market it is on the pride walk which is if you pull in right across the street from carnegie mm -hmm. hotel straight on Straight up the hill. Yep, there that is the Pride Walk. So we're there from 10 to 2-ish. We usually get there a little early, leave a little late. Um, but we're there every Thursday through September and October. So I didn't even know ETSU had a farmer's market. I, I know about the one downtown. Mm -hmm. So how long has ETSU's been going? And are there a lot of vendors there? So my first time doing theirs was in spring. They do a spring market and they do a fall market. So for the fall market, it's a little longer. It's two months. The spring market's about a month, maybe okay. a month and a half. Um, but they had, I think, about maybe 10 vendors there. And they also have some of the school organizations set up. They have the bluegrass there playing music. And they've got all kinds of coffee. Early birds usually there. They've got like a churro truck, lunch nice. trucks. They've got all kinds of stuff. It's really, it's and, really fun. And that's on what days? That's on Thursdays, 10 Thursday. to 2. Thursdays, 10 to 2. Mm -hmm. Midweek farmer's market. I'm learning yes. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's a really fun one. Yeah. Carly, we're going to go to the midweek farmer's market. That'll be cool. <laughs> um, okay, so let's say um, somebody want to reach out to you. Just the best thing is on your website, or do you want to um, – are you on so, Instagram? Yeah, I'm on, on all the things. Social media. I hear that's new and exciting. Yes. <laughs> I am on all the things. Yep. Um, and at Stella Cooper Co., all one word on everything. On everything. Yep. Still and then the website's go. just dot com. Gotcha. And you can, there is a contact form on the website if okay. you want to make a formal submission of yep. any kind. We also have all of the upcoming events listed there so you can know where to find us if awesome. you don't see what you like. Yeah. And I do custom orders. So you can do that online. You can message me. It all goes to my phone. Awesome. So. I love it. Okay. And then um, what, are you just super passionate about? That is a difficult question. And I've been thinking about that a lot lately, actually. I think that for a long time, I thought it was just dance. And that's what my main passion was. But I think it's more so just creating. Mm -hmm. um, if I get any downtime ever, 
I create, whether yeah. it be something physical or I'll go to the studio and dance a little bit or whatever the case is, do some graphics. I just like to create and make things and just an artist happen. with lots of different mediums. Yes. I love yes. it. I love it. Okay. Can't draw. I'm not a drawer. <laughs> don't, don't ask me for any paintings draw or drawings. Yeah, no, I'm terrible. Um, okay. A couple other important questions. Yeah. What kind of dog is Cooper? Brown. He's a brown dog? He's a brown dog. Just brown. He's a schmedium brown dog. <laughs> I have no idea what he is. He was found outside with his brother. Ah. And so I adopted him from the Unicoi County Animal, Animal Shelter. Shelter. Nice. Um, and he was he was just a little thing. He had oh. worms. He had giardia. He had everything but parvo, thank God. Yeah. Thank God not parvo. Yeah. That would have been... Protect his heart. Yeah. 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 That would have been a really tough one. Um, but he really... I don't know what he is, but he took to everything really well. He's, He's just an awesome dog. house trained really easily. Yeah. He doesn't he doesn't really do anything except talk back. So maybe some husky. There you go. The way that he talks back to me. Yeah. He says some things to me that hurt my feelings, but that's okay. Well, you know. He's a jumper. <laughs> but yeah, he's I All have right. no idea. And then what he is. the other one, Stella. What kind of dog is Stella? She's adopted as well. Okay. Um, so she's a black schmedium dog. Black schmedium dog. Yes. Well, I love that you guys have adopted these dogs. And, yeah. Um, and part of my business model is that I donate 10% of whatever I make in that month to a local animal shelter. So a lot of the times it is the ones that we got Stella and Cooper from, which is Unicoi and um, Washington County Humane awesome. Society. Yeah. But anything else, if people have any kind of rescues, they'll submit it online and We'll do that one that month, and yeah. That's cool. Well, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. It's been a pleasure yeah. to get to know you. I'm sure our guests really enjoyed getting to know you as well. And, um, yeah, so if you guys need a candle or you want to learn how to dance or just want to have, yeah, come meet Cooper and Stella, um, call Taylor and um, connect with her, get on her website, get on the Instagrams, yeah. however you want to do it to get with her. And, um, yeah, and she'll just brighten up your life. It was just a pleasure talking to you, and I hope yeah, your business you so takes off well. And I hope your office, I think you'll, you're looking for a for storefront downtown. Yes. So hopefully that comes to fruition quickly as well. Hopefully. Yeah, so um, thanks again for coming on the podcast, and um, thank you guys for listening and, and enjoying our conversation. Until next time, I am Colin Johnson with the Colin and Carly Group and Keller Williams Realty. And if you're looking to make a move here, we would love to help you do that. Or if you want to come meet Taylor, just holler at me and I'll connect you with her. Thanks so much and have an awesome day.